love Chauncey Gardner Johnson, and Jalen Carter is about to drop in the draft right to the Eagles. Dallas still stinks. You might do it, King Ding back here, and how can you not love? Chauncey Garner Johnson. How can you not love the guy for calling it like it is? I love it. And what's with Jalen Carter? He's going to get arrested. He's got an arrest warrant for him right now. Is he going to drop in the draft? I think he will. Just not as far as some people may think. But we're going to get into it in a second. But before we do that, if you're new to the channel and you like the content, make sure you hit that like button. More importantly, make sure you subscribe to the most censored, most throttled Eagles content creator in all of the internet. And if you've been subscribed for a while, I love you guys. Thank you for all the support. You are the best subscribers, best trolls, best everything right here on this channel. So thank you. Um, now, I'm just going to jump right into this because there's a couple things I want to talk about, right? There's, there's really three things I want to talk about. The first thing, let's talk about Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. Now, he was sitting there and he was watching, uh, you know, the coaches speak and he saw what Jonathan Gannon talked about with the Super Bowl and, uh, man... He went right after Gannon. He called him out, okay? Um, get, somebody was asking Gannon about what went wrong in the second half of the Super Bowl. And, and, and he said they didn't make enough plays or whatever. And Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, this is what he said. He said, you ain't put us in a position to make plays. And, and, and I got to tell you, he's 100,000% right. He is absolutely right. Jonathan Gannon did a horrible job of putting the Eagles in a position to win that game. The second half and the adjustments that were made against the Eagles defense after the Kansas City made their adjustments at halftime, the Eagles had no answers. He did nothing to change up. And Chauncey Garner Johnson is 1,000% right. He is right. Whether you like Gannon or you don't like Gannon, he is right. Gannon did not put them in the best position to win in this game. They looked confused on defense, like they didn't know what was going on. At one point, they're blitzing at like what? Can't see was like the five, four, five yard line. They're they're they're, they're blitzing everybody down at the goal line. It didn't make any sense. I thought Jonathan Gannon had one of his worst games. I said all season. From the beginning of the season starting, my number one concern was Jonathan Gannon. Jonathan Gannon. Jonathan Gannon. And I think Jonathan Gannon put the guys in a bad position to win. Now, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to sit there and say that Jonathan Gannon is the only guy at fault and it's all on him. It's not all on him. I'm not going to say that. But it's 50 50. I think it's 50 50. I thought he could have done a met, much better job putting guys in a position to win. I have said this before. I feel like at times Jonathan Gannon does not have a good feel for the game as it's going on. And when Mahomes hurt himself in the second half and he gets up limping, he never went after him. He never went to test that ankle. He just let Mahomes sit back in the pocket. The Eagles couldn't get pressure. He did nothing to adjust to the fact that they couldn't get any pressure on Mahomes. Uh, you know, they didn't try anything. And uh, I thought I thought the corners were way back, uh, way way too far back. Um, and and the crossing the crossing routes killed the Eagles. They had no answer for it. So Chauncey Garner Johnson is one hundred thousand percent right. He is right. I totally agree with him. Damn it, I forgot my pinky ring. Damn it, I think it's at work. Ah. Anyways, I feel I don't feel like I don't feel like a made man on YouTube without my pinky ring. You know what I mean, I love that thing, but. I agree with Chauncey Gardner Johnson, 100%. And I, I got to tell you, I think Chauncey Gardner Johnson uh, is right. Now, he deleted his tweet, obviously, because he's got to be politically correct. And, he, you know, he can't say something that's going to piss the team off too much, you know, and, and you don't want to come off looking bad. But that's what was in his heart. That's the truth. That's what he thought. And I agree with him. And I think a lot of players probably agree with him, too. I have no doubt in my mind other players on that defense didn't say the same thing. They did. Now, now, like I said, I'm not putting it on Jonathan Gannon. But Jonathan Gannon, to me, you know, it's funny because everybody's like, oh, everybody's blaming Jonathan Gannon all the time. Everybody's blaming Jonathan Gannon all the time. I, I, I always see Jonathan Gannon blaming the players. He's always putting it on the players. Oh, the players didn't make the plays. They didn't do this. I don't have enough players around me. Uh, you know, I'm, you know, get me better players. To me, it's always him that's making the excuses, not the players. I think Jonathan Gannon 
put them in a bad position to win. I thought he did a horrible job in the second half, and uh, he could not adjust to the adjustments of Kansas City, and he got out coached, and they they ran circles around him. That's the truth. The Eagles should have won that game, um, but that defense couldn't get a stop. They couldn't get one stop in the second half. Now I'm not gonna say it's all on him. It's not all on him, but. There is a lot, a good portion that is. I just believe that. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is Jalen Carter, okay? Because this is kind of crazy. There has been an arrest warrant issued for Jalen Carter, okay? Um, Ari Miralva, I hope I say your name right, he says, An arrest warrant has been issued for Georgia defensive tackle and potential number one pick Jalen Carter for reckless driving and racing. Stems from a January 15th crash that took a life of a teammate in Stafford. Carter is on schedule to speak at the NFL Combine at 10.30 Eastern Time. Uh, I will not be able to watch that. I will be working, but I will watch it later. However, Jalen Carter, with this arrest warrant, the question is going to be, will he fall in the draft? I've already seen Cowboy fans and other people saying, we're going to draft him, he's going to fall to us. I don't think he falls that far. He, he might fall because of it, but I don't see him getting past the Eagles. I don't think he gets past the Eagles. And if the Eagles, if he falls a 10 with the Eagles, I, I draft him. I draft him instantly. I, this arrest warrant, this is not going to deter me one bit, okay? He was reckless driving, and he were racing, all right? Now, that's not a good thing. You shouldn't do it. It's dangerous. You put people in danger. Uh, I get it. It's reckless. It's immature. But I, I'm going to be honest with you, and maybe I'm old-fashioned. My friends did it. I did it. We've all done it. At one point or the other, you've done it. You probably watching this probably have done it. And it's not a good thing. And I'm not saying it's the right thing. But I don't think it's something that should drop him too much. These are misdemeanors, by the way. These are not felonies. These are misdemeanors. And um, I think if the Eagles talk to him and, and, and you know, they kind of get where he's coming from, uh, understand, he understands his mistake, um, and, and he messed up. I, I don't think this should drop him too far. Now, it may drop him out of the top five. It might. But I can't see any way whatsoever it drops past 10. You, if you're the Eagles and he's at 10, you take him. You take him. Because I'm telling you, that's that's something that somebody can learn from. And I think, you know, I, I think there's a second chance. It's a misdemeanor. Shouldn't have been racing. Obviously, the fact that his friend died in it is, is a horrible thing. Uh, it's a horrible thing, but um, I I don't think that that you know to me it's not like um, you know some of the other things that guys do. He didn't commit murder. I don't believe he he was the reason the person died. They were racing or whatever. Um, but well, you know we'll find out the details. But obviously these are misdemeanors. So he was racing. He was driving reckless, uh, and and he's going to get in trouble for it. And and you know and and deservedly so. But I don't think that this should, this should uh, make you think that he's a bad seed. He shouldn't be picked. He should drop. Everybody should just ignore him. I don't think it. I don't think it's that bad. I think it's it's immature and it's wrong. But uh, you know what? Uh, I think I think that finding out where he is and stuff. If he's at ten, I'm taking him. I'm telling you right now. I am not. I am not dropping off Jalen Carter one iota. Okay. If he falls to 10, if he falls to 8, I'm trying to trade up and get him. That would be an absolute steal for the Eagles. Now, I don't know how far it's going to drop him. I don't think it's going to drop him as far as people think. Maybe the bottom of the top 10, but that's about it. So we have to keep an eye on it. And, you know, the other thing I'm going to talk about is, is, is Howie Roseman. I listened to Howie Roseman yesterday. I listened to his press conferences. I listened to a bunch of interviews. And Howie Roseman is saying the exact thing that I've been saying the past week in my videos. He's saying exactly the same thing. If you do what everybody else does, you're probably in a bad position. You're probably going to lose. Because people and teams always follow, you know, they always follow some new trend. Somebody does something, has success. Everybody tries to copy them. If you're the ones trying to follow that, you're probably losing. This is what I've been saying about the Eagles and the fact that Howie doesn't allow that to happen. This is why you have to, when you think about the Eagles and what they're going to do, you got to think outside the box. You got to think outside the box. What is that going to be? I don't know. I get a lot of people talking about, we should go out and get Leonard Fournette. We should get Leonard Fournette. I want that fat bastard. He's fat. Oh, he's slow and fat. I don't want him. 
Go get somebody else. Uh, Leonard Fournette, to me, is shot. He, he, he's got to get in tremendous shape otherwise. I don't want him. Uh, I, I think that's not outside of the box type move. Taking Bajan Robinson or a running back late in the first round, trading up to get one with your second first round pick, that's an out of the box move. Even using Kenneth Gainwell as your number one primary back would kind of be an out of the box move. But the Eagles will do things outside the box. They're not going to do the same thing that they did last year. They're going to build it in a different way. They're going to try to be leaders in the trend. And they're going to be the trendsetters. That is what I was talking about. How he said exactly the same thing. And that's why I know he gets it. That's why I know, after all these years, how he definitely gets it. I don't think he got it early in his career, but he gets it now. And so I expect the Eagles to make some big moves, surprise moves, some things that people aren't expecting. And one of the things I'm thinking of is that you make your offense a lot better. You, you sure up any little hole and make that offense so good that it's scoring 30-plus points a game. If you can't bring back the guys that you had last year and you're going to lose them all, then guess what? At least your offense is going to be that good. And if Jalen Carter falls, to, to, falls out of the top 10 or falls close to 10, let's say, I'm taking him. I'm taking him in inst it, one once in one second. I don't. I already write as soon as he's at eight. I'm writing Jalen Carter down on the court. Uh, I'm not letting what what happened to him uh, steer me at all from drafting him if I'm the Eagles. Now, will the number one pick or two pick? Will they do it? Maybe, maybe. But we'll find out. We're going to find out. With that said, I will talk to you guys later. Take care. Talk to you later. Of course, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Don't be a dingbat. Remember, it's how we vision. We're all just living in it. Once again on this Charles and Gardner Johnson thing, I, I do not think it's all on Jonathan Gannon. I want to I wanna stress that because I know people only hear what they want to hear. I got to say, I don't think it's on him. I think it's 50-50, though. I think it's 50-50. I think Jonathan Gannon did not put these guys in a great position to win whatsoever. Whatsoever. Um, and we'll see. And hopefully, Sean Desai, hopefully he, will, you know, hopefully he will be a better fit for coordinator. And he won't allow those things to happen. It's going to be very, very interesting. But I, I have to go... 100% with Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, so does my cat. That you, I don't know if you can hear it, but it's talking up a storm because it's very pissed off about the Chiefs winning the Super Bowl. Denzel Washington out.